actually got home and went to edit down one for today. And then all of a sudden realized that I just kind of jumped right into the day on Randy's car. So in this video, you're gonna see that um, we get the doors fitted, um, get the trunk lid fitted, and get the quarter windows, the carbon quarter windows installed. Um, the, the doors, I had to completely rehang the hinges and I had to redo the strikers. Let's jump right in. So we got getting this door fitted and if you're having a problem where your door you, you slam it closed and then it wants to like kind of bounce the first issue could be no rubbers okay it's not having rubber seals and that causing everything to just bounce like crazy but your second issue could be a striker adjustment but I know that wasn't our issue um, what our issue ended up being was I actually checked it on the latch so you could check your latch with a screwdriver Okay, so you can take a screwdriver actually and put in your latch to simulate it closing. Okay, let me see. So when it goes like that, it should stay locked. Okay, what ours is doing is our latch was basically on Randy's, you have to pull it forward, you push it forward to um, release the clip. There's no spring in here. Um, yet we're gonna fix it there might have used to be a spring but there's not now so what we had to do was actually had to adjust all of this because it was basically leaving it in the open position so you take your finger and you spring this forward and that opens it and then when you let off the latch didn't spring back so then when it would hit the striker and close it basically was still opened up here and then it would just bounce and not want to latch and the more you slammed it and the harder you slammed it would vibrate this where it kind of went back a little bit and then eventually it would catch um, so you're thinking that you got an issue with your latch or your striker when really what it is is your handle up here is holding your door open so I mean you can test everything where you can see what's going on that way you don't have to worry about none of this hitting anything and because uh, that could be messing you up so you test it with just a screwdriver and it should just latch and it should stay latch. You shouldn't be able to fight it around and come back open. If you can fight your screwdriver and this springs back open, then that means that um, that's not that's not latching shut. So now with it, you can hit that and then it, uh, it opens right up. So we're gonna take a break on all the door slamming for a second. This is the piece that goes in the uh, rear, your rear, uh, I think it's called a rear luggage tray or rear package tray if you wanna get technical. But for you at the house, this is where your rear speakers would go and your rear deck. Um, your back glass would be right here. You get the point. Randy's tired of seeing this. So he was thinking about getting a new one and I was like, whoa, I was like, dude, you gotta chill. I was like, we don't need to run up the bill. No more on this. There's nothing wrong with this piece. We're gonna rivet it back in. We don't need to buy a new piece just because you're tired of looking at some letters. So we're gonna bust out our old trim and bumper paint that I've went over a hundred times on this channel. It makes things look absolutely amazing. And we're gonna coat this piece and make it look brand new and get rid of that all at the same time. So since this is spray paint, uh, no real prep work is needed on this. Just wipe it down with a uh, tack cloth, 
to make sure you don't have no trash on it. I do need to drill these rivets out. Make sure you've got all your rivets out ahead of time um, so you're not drilling in fresh paint and then we'll coat it. So let me drill them three rivets out and then we'll get this thing coated. So this is all we're working on right now is this is how it was. They just had some little holes in. I can barely fit two fingers in that thing. So it's really hard. And then that up in there, it's really hard to get your fingers up in there, get to a bolt. And I'm just not interested in struggling like that. So I went ahead and opened it up where you can get your hand up in there easily, you know, and get you a nut starter to whatever you need to do. And it technically could be opened up a little more, but I don't need to open it up more. I can easily see what I'm working with. I can see that one. And, um, you know, you can you can see that one. That one's already done. I didn't mess with that. This one I just opened up a little bit. I'll probably clean it up a touch. This one I did it nice and square. So we're going to move on, square cut this one out nice and big, and open this one up bigger, and we'll be good to go. This You're not losing no strength over this. I mean, technically, I guess a little, but not nothing to make a difference, man. So went from that little of a hole to a lot bigger, easier to work with. Uh, don't fight with this crap and make your job harder than it needs to be. We're also going to go ahead and paint this whole underside uh, probably this afternoon. Uh, we're going to use some scrap red, actually. I'm not going to use the correct color because the correct color is expensive. So I'm going to use up some scrap stuff that I got and uh, just get it back red on the bottom so it's nice and clean. And that way all the edges are painted and everything's nice and clean if you ever have the trunk off. But just want to work on getting the ring off right now so we can put a trunk lid on and test fit it before we move on to the other door. All right, so test fitting the trunk on, okay? And you know, you got, uh, with the trunk, you got arms. Um, so there's not really much side to side adjustment. Uh, you could, sh you can shim it with washers, um, you know, possibly a little bit, but you have a lot of in and out adjustments. So the best way to, you, you wanna set your in and out adjustment right here so that your trunk lid is flush with that. So when you got the back glass out and the rear out, Easiest thing to do is like you've seen us do, get our bolt started, set it down gently, tape your edges if you're working on a paint product, printed product, and then stick your hand up underneath here, way up underneath here, and you can actually get the back bolt, snug it down, that's gonna lock your in and out set. I do have the latch out of it. When you're fitting body panels, a lot of times it's easier to take the latch out so you don't have to keep opening it. And I've got a board just sitting there to help me with my height. Um, same thing on this side, reach in, snug your bolt down. So all of this, I'm not really too unhappy with, but right here, I mean, we're so tight that it actually, it actually touches right there. So definitely want to clearance some of that to make it match up there. And on this side, obviously we know clear, no clearancing at all because of how big of the gap is. Now it is a little bit getting close right here, questionable. So I would like to clearance some of that. I might try to see if it'll bend real fast. Um, jar the arm over a little but more than likely we're going to end up just clearing it but let's see what see if we can just jar the trunk lid on metal uh trunk lids and hoods that we fit on wreck cars we actually always we jar them all the time to get them where we want them after they've been in a wreck Help me push on this. Don't do this. Don't do that. I know it's crazy, right? And we don't, this is hot. So, 
So it's gonna gently push on it this way. Yep. Yep, keep on feeling it. That'll put pressure up at the top, not on the back side. Yep. Alright. So you got right here and you see me on the door using the uh, mixing stick. Normally your mixing stick, the gap on that is actually beautiful for a gap. So let's look on this Honda, which is this area that's not been wrecked, okay? So our mixing stick fits right in, our door gaps, okay? See that? All right, and that Honda's, that's factory. So what I do is mixing stick is an excellent rule of thumb. So if you could fit it in there, you know, I mean, you can have a little bit more play, especially on a fiberglass part but uh you at least need at least a uh, mixing stick and see up there's a little tight but it's fiberglass part we're not gonna get carried away it clearances it's not it's not gonna touch the paint um you know you're good but we've got a mixing stick when it's closed all the way around it so it looks good so on the trunk lid you got the same thing okay so that's a tight mixing stick up there okay and then right here is a big fat loose mixing stick it's a fiberglass part. I'm not trying to get perfect. I'm just showing the reference. There's where it starts to get tight. And then down here, we're all the way tight to it. So what you can do is you just lay your stick on its side like this. So you're going to be touching your quarter panel on this side. And on this side, you're going to take your Sharpie and just run down it. And you can see where it actually opens up. Okay. Then what I'll probably do is I'll cut on this side of the line, not on this side. I'll actually cut on this side and leave the marker line. So I won't get rid right of the marker line. And that way we have a pretty good gap. So this side is fatter. You've seen we try to rock it. We try to shift it over. It's just going to be what it's going to be. Uh, there's going to be another wing here. It's all going to be red, so it won't be terrible. Um, you know, I don't like it, but I do understand that it's a fiberglass part. And I also understand that this thing's been hitting the rear. You know that from watching the previous videos. So there's no telling if it's shifted over an eighth of an inch or so. But we've got a mixing stick there and we have a very tight mixing stick right there, but we don't have it right there. So all I did was just take my stick, follow around it and traced it. And that's what we're gonna clearance that corner. And then that pretty much gives us all, you know, the same thing. This is like a mixing stick and a half right here. You know, you can see the play, but y'all are the ones in the comment tell me it's just a race car. so. Maybe I'll take some of your advice and consider it just a race car. But we're definitely going to clearance this. I'd rather have a little too big of a gap so the piece, painted pieces never touch each other um, versus not having enough gap and then they touch each other and then the paint bust. Or you deal with stuff like this right here where edges chip and stuff like that from it hitting. Um, also, when you paint this, by the time we build up paint on the end, you're going to have at least a thickness of... Uh, you know, a couple pieces of notebook paper, if not the thickness of a driver's license on the edge, that's going to tighten that gap up a little bit more all the way around.
tires back on the car and before we threw them on the car had to actually do a plug so somehow when we rolled this car in uh, originally it come in on tires and I did my first cut and then it um, went into the booth got primer come back out and then it went on rollers somehow this piece of carbon this is one out of a million probably it picked it up off the floor stabbed it straight through on a radial so we pulled it to see if it went all the way through sure enough our luck it did and we went ahead and just put a tire plug in it just to roll it around of course he doesn't feel safe uh, having a plug in the tire so he um, yeah he's gonna have to replace the tire now so that sucks but uh, Randy's exact words was if that's the only problem we have today then we had a good day so <sighs> positive Randy so let's keep getting at it about to get to go run to the hardware store get some uh, lock uh, nuts for the quarter windows because the quarter windows actually just come with these uh, so they're literally setting you up for failure because these things will vibrate loose if you have an aggressive enough car and uh, come out like it's already come out once on him so we're gonna go get some nylon locking nuts from the hardware store and then fit these uh, carbon quarter windows in and I forgot to ask him where they come from one of the other people on the comments in the last video asked I'll have to try to remember to text him and ask and then let y'all know. So in four of Randy's um, quarter windows in his car, the uh, carbon fiber composite windows, um, I'm about to drop it a picture of where he got them from. That way you can look it up. Um, it's Dan, like show neck. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I suck at the English language practically. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna put a picture up. That way you can look it up on Google. Um, and it pulls right up. So I just hit the website. Alright, so on these quarter windows, you have this one bolt that's really hard to get to. So the easiest thing to do is actually use one of these that has the, um, you push it and it opens up on the end. So all you do is load your this stupid little nut in here. Y'all don't like stupid little nut? So aggravating these little things. And then the magnet will actually, see the magnet will actually hold it all like that. And so then that allows you to go in there and stick it through the hole and then you can turn it utilizing this. 